Hey fellas, well, the PS5 showcase took place yesterday, and while this is once again shaking out the plans I have for this week, and it's thankfully not going to be too major, and I also know that no Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase just streamed and today, but that can wait till tomorrow, so hence the slightly reshuffling my plans, so, oh, on top of the... Sister Wheel will expand what's already been shown. There's a lot of the material on this stream, so let's get this started. The legacy of the crystals has shaped a history for long enough. So, Final Fantasy 16 looks quite impressive, and even though it's just showing the PC version and and footage there, the fact that the console will be able to run this is definitely impressive. I mean. I also want to keep emphasizing that this is different from Project Athea, which is going to be a new IP, whatever it might entail, not related to this series, not related to Dragon Quest or Chrono Trigger or anything they've ever done. So, it definitely looks like it'll be an interesting game, as with uh, their next title they revealed, Spider-Man Miles Morales, the spin-off to the highly acclaimed successful... PS4 title with Insomniac now returning to develop the game. I'm actually really glad that they're doing this first instead of doing the sequel right away. I mean, hey, because it's something quite simple. All with all like how, given how Miles played a big part in the last game as well, I have not finished it yet, but I'm definitely have more time to work on it. And also helps that the acclaim and success of Spider-Verse There's also makes sense to do this as well. I mean, I'm not sure how the character's going to be used here, but it's clear that it makes sense like the Uncharted Lost Legacy level experience that they are touting it. And no way I think I can compare it to is like if the first one was like the main Arkham series games, this could be like Arkham Origins, like, not in the same one to manage to, but still fun, if the fun, I mean, I also don't mind them making the Tinker a female in this game either, I mean, given how, they, I think they established it as like a title rather than one individual, like, heck, heck, the Tinker even became, he basically became the Shocker in Homecoming after a mishap with a Cinderator, I mean, I mean, the Hogwarts Legacy game coming next year. I will just deal with all this that comes in with the author, so it, it's definitely not my field. And as for Fortnite, I'm not going to dignify that consideration with the response right now. Okay, moving right along. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I mean, it's coming this holiday season. And I mean, well, I'm not the biggest COD fan. I have not played that many of Black Ops, Ops ones specifically. This one looks interesting. I mean, especially given the current situation right now. Now, in order to explore uncertainties of the present, and it, even in virtual format, to it helps to explore someone's play out in the past and some of the outs gotten details wrong. Um, personally, and that's supposedly it's going to be like a trial of multiplayer on PS4, but we'll see about that. And here we go, more on Resident Evil 8 Village, I mean, see more of what the actual village is going to entail, I mean, I really like how the recent entry series have managed to bring back the horror how that was a heart of the series to begin with. I mean, since it's definitely the case where Capcom um, is especially pretty good at, at, at listening to what's happening in the effort, especially at the last sprint, trying to be a non starter. I mean, like five wasn't great, but it had its moments. I mean, but six, I think trying to ride COD's coattails was definitely a mistake. I mean, and as for her, or how to handle Chris, his character, whether they're going to make him, him 
an anti-hero if not already antagonist. We'll see. He, he, it heavily looks like it could potentially be the Logan of the series. I mean, it is clear that here that almost 25 years of fighting these he's his creatures has taken its toll on Chris, so I guess we'll find out. Deathloop was going to be coming out this year, but I'm actually kind of glad they delayed it to Q2 2021, especially after how, shall we say, <coughs> disastrous as the launch of Fallout 76 was. Like how, I'm not the biggest Fallout fan, but I definitely have enjoyed what I played of the series. I mean, he's I mean, he's where. Yeah, so it makes sense given how you're trying to take a new take on the battle royale genre and shoots in general. You wouldn't want to rush this. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, which another example of Capcom turns around after DMC is going to be a non starter. I mean, harder, I mean, which definitely is a occurring problem, which often is almost noticed until it's too late. I mean, like, it's basically like, let's take the successful this whole property and do almost nothing that made it popular. It'll make millions. And, well, I guess it didn't really work out because thankfully it's, the 5 was an improvement. It was direct sequel to the first 4 games that ignore the events DMC. I mean, let me put it this way. They thought the new direction, not only did the new direction not work, but... It actually got outsold by a remaster of the previous games. Ouch. So it's... Oh, again, there'll be other ones. The full one snipe hasn't revealed just yet, but still plenty of address here. Mm. Yeah. Oddworld Soulstorm. Um, I've always been a big fan Han, of what Oddworld Creations has come up with. With, I mean... Uh, given how... With... Abe and Munch is all the same. My personal favorite, Stranger's Wrath. I mean, yeah, I mean, they've always managed to put a unique spin on how the most genres have had a, had a hand in. On top of it, contains some elements of the of the classic games. It looks like it may potentially be like the darkest one they've done. The whole, basically, like the Odd World version of Mad Max. I mean, but the humor definitely remains means plentiful. Thankfully, I mean, like again, with Stranger's Wrath, that was. A darker one they did, but the humor was still there. I mean, here. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I mean, even though oh, it's definitely been a while since the initial peak of getting picked up by all uh, face cam streamers, Scott Cawthon's and, and, and Simulator of Guarding an Abandoned Pizza Parlor, the creepy animatronics still come as up a fan base. And so if you think that potentially, hey, going back to Chuck E. Cheese's in the middle of a pandemic is spoopy, get a little of this game. I mean, so I can only imagine that it'll continue to darken the shorts of many, many people. And it still looks pretty impressive, even though not uh, essentially the main concept is still being done, I think, by Call of Duty's Garage, more or less, be like, and and then we're gonna get into the biggest stuff in the stream. He the next cut. Okay, I mentioned this as in the last stream. He I addressed for the console, but still, oh, really gonna be looking forward to this one. Demons Souls remastered. I mean, it's clear to me the developers are really. Like giving the all to bring this title back. I mean, given how the series and the Soulsborne subgenre seem to have gone from strength to strength over the past decade or so. I mean, I mean, they already did the first two Dark Souls games. They, I think, they developed the third and fourth as Bloodborne for newer consoles specifically, and not just visually. He, I can tell that given how. Both the disc free and the, the standard units are going to have 4K right out of the box. I mean, uh, so. Oh, but the gameplay still looks to be 
as as tough as ever. I mean, but given how I'm definitely kind of old fashioned, having grown up in the eight bit sixteen bit days, I don't see difficulty as a deterrent at all. I mean, like how I see it as a motivator to keep going and keep keep improving. We need to see what works and what doesn't. I mean, in fact, you actually basically basically the this footage was consistent of like almost like the first stretch of the game where you basically had to die in order to uh, to get the quest started off, like the whole. So again, much like like Ari saying seeing you die doesn't really a deterrent at all. Like, and now we've got the PlayStation Plus collection, which is going to be about launch. So. Again, I still would like to hear more about backward compatibility, but there's also claims to corroborate what I already said that mass, most of the PS4 library will be backward compatible with the system, which is kind of a tricky thing to get in that I've noticed over each past generation. And I, I need more information. I don't know about if the Ubisoft is saying it's true, but given how they try to pass off a place like glorified tech demo as a gameplay reveal. I'm gonna go out on them and see if we've got an unreliable narrator on our hands there. Here. But anything from the new God of War to Persona 5 to Uncharted 4, what we part of the collection. I don't know whether it's going to be a like their new greatest hits, but it's gonna be probably the new PlayStation Plus benefits and and yep, now I've gotten to the part where everyone already knows about how the console itself will be coming out out in November. The standard edition will be four hundred dollars. Oh, for disc free, the regular edition will be five hundred, base price, depending on tax where you live, man. I am given how they already had to cut the supply because of this virus, I'm not getting them right away, but I'd be really be excited to try it out no, no matter what. Especially since every place I pre orders got so much traffic the sites were crashing left and right. I mean <laughs> seriously, like someone who just wanted a place when like like Mario 3D All Stars couldn't even pre order that because of how much they were getting there. A last but definitely not least God of War Ragnarok coming in 2021. As someone who was fascinated by both series and Norse mythology, it should be really interesting. And keep uh, maybe keep the memes, but Atreus is, is coming out uh, nice and easy. I especially kind of like the ones that basically turned Kratos into Hank Hill and Atreus into Bobby. Like, the boy ain't right. <laughs> well... I guess I'll see you tomorrow with a talk of the next Nintendo Direct Party Showcase, so later. Mm.